take a look at the two lineups today. George Burley is forced to make two changes from the side that won in Iceland. Skipper Stephen McManus is suspended after his red card in Reykjavik. 38-year-old David Weir, his replacement. Darren Fletcher takes the captain's armband. Chris Commons is injured, so there's a competitive debut for West Brom's James Morrison after a couple of friendly appearances. Barry Robson is given a wider role in a 4-3-3 system to start with, although that is flexible, they can change if they need to. Kenny Miller misses out with a hamstring tweak. Former Spurs striker Stefan Everson was a doubt for Norway, but he has made it and will link up with Aston Villa's John Carew in a threatening attack. Other familiar faces include Fulham's Breda Hangeland and John Arna Risa, seven years with Liverpool, now with Roma. His brother Bjorn Helga also starts. On such a big occasion, there's a debut for goalkeeper John Knudsen, one of six changes Aga Haraini has made from the team held by Iceland. Half of those changes are down to injuries. It'll be Norway to get us going at Hampden Park and an early touch for Craig Gordon. Holland, Macedonia and Scotland all have three points on the board in this group. Only five teams in this group as opposed to six elsewhere. Norway and Iceland were just a point apiece. Norway have a tough test in midweek. They're home to Holland on Wednesday night. Scotland have the night off. Iceland-Macedonia, the other midweek game in this group. Here is Sean Maloney, starting on the left. And making significant progress, helped by James Morrison. It's a rather uncomfortable clearance from Kjetil Weyla. And Scotland will be keen to test the Norwegian keeper. He is an experienced keeper in his 30s now, but this is his international debut. They've had one or two problems with that position. And Jastein, who played against Iceland, has been dropped to the bench. A corner in the second minute for Sean Maloney. Kirk Broadford, who scored in Iceland on his debut, can't get close to it. Maloney will try again. Crown it out somewhat this time. Morrison dinks it in. And it's cleared by Hangela. It's the 16th meeting between Scotland and Norway. And Norway have only won twice. But one of those victories was here four years ago this week in a qualifier for the last World Cup. Maloney. Morrison. And certainly taking on Weyler. And Scotland are up and at them. Morrison, a newcomer to the international arena, has secured another corner for the Scots. Two early corners. Maloney again will take it. It's veered away from everyone and Darren Fletcher has to retrieve it. Barry Robson now. Gary Caldwell. Partnered by David Weir today. George Burley forced into a couple of changes. With Stephen McManus suspended and Chris Commons injured. Caldwell. Broadfoot. It's off Vinsnes for a Scottish throw. A throw that will be taken by Gary Naismith. And Naismith's cross is cleared by the towering figure of Hangelan, the Norwegian captain. And that's Morrison firing it straight at Knudsen. James Morrison, born in Darlington in the northeast of England, actually played for England at under 20 level, but his Scottish grandparents have opened a new international door for him.
George Burley went to the World Cup as a player in 1982 in Spain, didn't get a game, but relished the experience of being at such a major tournament. And would dearly love to lead his country to South Africa in 2010. Carew, and he's got it back, and John Carew's bearing down, and Scotland have got away with that, Carew might have fallen there, it was untidy from Scotland this, Carew linking up with Everson, got away with Gary Naismith's challenge which could have sent Carew tumbling, Scotland are claiming a goal kick, Arge Haraida was hoping for a goal then. It is a corner though. Risa can normally be relied on to deliver. Risa sees his corner met by Scott Brown. And it's going to drop for Craig Gordon. seeing plenty of the ball early on, here is Morrison. Naismith's attempt to cross, blocked by Vinznez. Risa got a touch and now Hangelan. And Carew turning Caldwell. He's having to wait for others to join him. And the challenge is made by Kirk Broadfoot. Carew spinning away from Caldwell there, which was a worry for Scotland. With Carew and Hangerland around, corners could pose a problem for the home side too. Frederick Stromstad will take it. It's gone wide off uh, Hangerland. Scored a winner for Fulham against Arsenal early season in the English Premier League. Six foot five. foul that time Barry Robson Sean Maloney shrugging off one challenge Brown Broadfoot wanted it he's got it Just away from Fletcher. Carew. Turning weird that time. Big John Carew is having a run at Scotland. Forcing Gordon into the save. And Bjorn Helga Risa wastes the follow-up. And Scotland mightily relieved. But Norway might just be kicking themselves here. John Carew allowed to stride away. Forcing a save out of Gordon and scuffed and sliced horribly by Bjorn Helga Risa. An opportunity squandered by John Anna Risa's younger brother. But uh, John Carew has signalled his intent in the opening 20 minutes of this contest. He is asking questions to Scotland, but then they knew that he would. Carew helps that on to Everson.
Carew lost out that time, shackled by Morrison and Brown. Hoyland lunging in. Scotland haven't qualified for a major tournament since the 1998 World Cup in France, and they actually played Norway in those finals. Drew 1-1. Craig Burley equalising for the Scots. It was a game in which David Weir here made his competitive debut for Scotland and set up the goal for Craig Burley. George Burley's nephew. Now, it's Morrison breaking into the box. Might have come for himself. Tried to set up McFadden. Weir. Naismith. Maloney hugging the touchline. Robson nearby. Here he is. Weir. A slip from Robson. Scott Brown steps in to help. He's doing a bit more than helping now with a thrusting run into Norwegian territory. Morrison. Cut out by Hangelan. Here's Kirk Broadfoot. Maloney begging for the ball. He's got it now, but the flag is up. And that's frustrating. Maloney wanted it earlier. I can't believe they didn't get it earlier from Broadfoot. Maybe just... An earlier ball then from Broadfoot, and Maloney may well have been in. Everson. Hoyland. Carew. Stefan Everson. ago this week into a red card and the Stefan Everson penalty Morrison decided not to have a shot and that spared Norway Norway break away and John Carew first time but a rather tame effort straight at Gordon George Burley once played in a 4-0 win for Scotland over Norway, in Oslo as well. When these teams met in the last World Cup qualifiers, Norway won here, Scotland won in Norway. Kenny Miller scored twice for them on that occasion, but he's absent today through injury. Half time approaching. Nil nil. Norway have had the better openings. Colwell's free kick. If George Burley might uh, be tempted to go with two up as the home team, Scotland need a win. Just McFadden there at the moment. Having said that, he's now found Morrison, and this could be encouraging. 
Sullivan heading that back inside his own box. Stad. Everson for Carew. The Aston Villa striker threatening again, waiting for others to arrive in support. And just look how many Scotland players were there compared to Norway. Having said that, Risa maintains interest. Over and out. It would have to be good to score from there. Norway not exactly uh, giving John Carew too many options. Uh, hobbling one of Norway's most experienced players of course last minute of the first half and we hear from the touchline that there's going to be no significant added on time this will be a good time to score McFadden got his cross in two and Morrison pops his header over Big chance for Scotland on the stroke of half-time. McFadden the provider here. James Morrison got himself in there. And might have been slightly disappointed that nothing came of it. Darren Fletcher, to his credit, had got into the six-yard box. Had Morrison been able to pull it back. Ball up against Everson again. Teresa. Grindheim. That's it. It's half time. And there was no uh, added on time. Tom Carew has had some glimpses of goal. And Norway have had the better openings. But having said that, James Morrison. Nearly came up with the opening goal of the game in the final minute of the half. But at the break at Hampden Park in this World Cup qualifier, it is Scotland nil, Norway nil. Hampden Park has generally been a bit of a fortress over the years for Scotland. They've only lost three of their last 19 competitive matches here. They're going to have to step it up a gear and raise the stakes if they're to get the better of Norway who had the better openings in the first half with John Carew of Aston Villa, a major threat. And sooner or later, Scotland may have to give James McFadden some support up front. A lone role for him, isolated at times in that first half. But no rush yet for George Burley. Alongside him, Terry Butcher, who won 77 caps for England. Everson gets the better of Broadfoot. And Broadfoot gives away a free kick. You have to stay focused and concentrated every second in international football. Hangeland amongst those waiting, Carew in there, of course. Risa in towards Hangeland. Scotland survive. Gordon will gather. The next game in the group for both of these countries is Holland. Norway play them on Wednesday. Scotland play them next March. The uh, return of this fixture in Oslo isn't until the start of next season. Here's Carew. Scotland stretched. Carew 
challenged by Caldwell and it's beaten away by Gordon. But there's a sense of panic every time John Carew moves in to the Scotland box and no wonder. Nine goals in his last 15 games for Aston Villa. 21 goals for Norway. Reese's corner, cleared by Brown. Bjorn Helga Risa finds his older brother. And John Arner has been mugged by Scott Brown, and now Maloney threading it through. Um, there might well be a card coming out here, the first of the game. Whaler taking out Robson. In fact, uh, it was Hoyland. And it is he who has been shown a yellow card. And he probably thought it was worthwhile. Barry Robson had got himself into a decent position. So, John Inga Hoyland is booked. What can Scotland do with a free kick? Maloney, Naismith. It's Norway on defensive duty now, as McFadden takes the throw. McFadden again. Shrugging off Stromstad. And now up against Bjorn Helga Risa, and it's a corner for Scotland. And the Tartan Army are banging their drums at Hampden Park. Are they sensing a goal? Sean Maloney floats it in. Angeland clears it. Here's Barry Robson. Into his right foot. Oh, it's broken kindly, this for Norway. And Scotland short of numbers. Vinsnes delaying it, but now he's found Carew. Naismith felt that Carew got the last touch, but it is a corner for Norway. I can't imagine he'd let it go if he did. moving quickly from one end to the other. It's John Arnarisa then to float the corner in. Gordon struggling to get there, and it's gone behind. Whaler rising. Well, some people watching uh, thought that had gone in the back of the net, but just wide, much to Scotland's relief. He climbed above Darren Fletcher and wasn't far away from opening the scoring. Stephen Fletcher is on. His only previous senior cap came on his 21st birthday back in March against Croatia. James McFadden, so often Scotland's talisman and the Tartan Army making their feelings known as he trudges off. But George Burley is making a bold move here. He's going with... Stephen Fletcher and Chris Iwalumo tapping up his strike force for a goal. Iwalumo in fine form for Wolves in the championship this season. Makes his Scotland debut. And McFadden walks straight past George Burley, not happy. Oh, it's some strike there, and it's stuck with John Knudsen. Barry Robson, plenty of power. He 
feel a bit for McFadden on his own for most of the game, but it's nothing personal, it's business. World Cup business. George Burley has changed things around. He's always been a positive manager. His club sides have reflected that. It's offside against Iwalumo. He was born in Scotland, began his playing career at St Mirren. He actually got caught up by Bertie Vokes when he was in charge of Scotland a few years ago, but he had to pull out because his team at the time, Stoke, were involved in the end-of-season Football League playoffs. Oh, that's a forceful challenge from Hangeland. Welcome to the game, Stephen Fletcher. Fletcher scored a couple of goals for the under-21s last month. Scotland need to get some service into the strikers, Iwalumo and Stephen Fletcher. A decent service at that if they are to break the deadlock. Caldwell's free kick. Iwalumo rising. He certainly is a handful, he's uh, he'll put himself about. Scotland's answer to John Carew, really. Stephen Naismith has got himself in there. Gary Naismith, rather. In fact, there, there was no flag on that one. And what an opportunity squandered by Chris Iwalumo. How did he miss? How did he miss? Well, he could have made a name for himself there. George Burley could have done with that one being put away. Just over 50,000 backed into Hampden Park. Around 4,000 Norwegian fans here. The Tartan Army had in force again. Sell out crowd for a monumental match. And they would dearly love a goal, the Scotland fans, to keep their dreams alive. Fletcher. In towards Iwalumo. Stephen Fletcher looked like he was being held by Hangeland. The Swiss referee not uh, interested in any Scotland appeals. He has given Maloney a free kick, though. Maloney hung in there. Brown. And it's cleared by Stromstad. Back it comes. Naismith. Maloney heading nowhere fast. Carew. Weir. Caldwell. David Weir. Replacing the suspended Stephen McManus today. Scott Brown. Another energetic performance from him. And he's produced a few of those lately for club and country. Risa. Brown. Fletcher, who hasn't really stamped his mark on this game. As is often the case with Scotland. He plays for his country. Naismith. Stephen Fletcher tumbling. Maloney! Just veered wide from Sean Maloney. Decent try. Just the one international goal so far. That was against the Faroe Islands. 
towards Burley. Having his patience tested, but then that's the way it is at international level. David Weir, Scott Brown. Here is Gary Caldwell with uh, room to roam. Caldwell seeking out Iwalumo and Sean Maloney deflected wide corner. He's had a couple of goes in the past few minutes. Sean Maloney, Scotland are getting closer and closer. Just came off Hangar. I think the keeper would have had it anyway, but Scotland have a corner. It's Barry Robson to float it in. Angela wasn't letting anyone get near that. Apart from his own keeper. Caldwell. Weir. Rather hurried. Quarter of an hour remaining. It's become strangely gripping this. The Scotland look for a goal on their own patch, but Vinsnes breaking out. Norway certainly on the back foot at the moment. Here's Scott Brown, all action. Fletcher. Scott Brown again, just overhit that. Looking for Stephen Fletcher. Too much on it from Scott Brown. Norway going to make a change. Stefan Everson, who was a big uh, doubt for this game. In fact, uh, he is staying on. Stromstad is the man coming off. And on in his place is Morton Gans Pedersen. Stromstad preferred to Pedersen in the starting lineup. Pedersen of Blackburn Rovers, more than capable of scoring and creating, and that will be a concern for Scotland to see him coming on. He's playing with the big boys now. Talking of big boys, here's Carew and Morton Gavs Pedersen. Corner. Cross to take it. A Norwegian goal here would certainly be soul destroying for Scotland after that Iwalumo miss. But these things can happen in football. It's Risa then to send it in. It's gone all the way through. And a bit of a let off as Hangeland takes a sore one. First time he's been lurking on the far post. I'll get Haridas Norway. We'll settle for a point, but with Pedersen on and Everson and Carew around. We'll still fancy nicking all three. Hangeland up against Iwalumo, battle of the big men. Mistake there from Brown of all people. And here's Pedersen and Brown unable to make the challenge and here's Everson and Craig Gordon with a vital save here's Daniel Broughton and Scotland got bodies in the way it looked highly ominous then for the Scots but Norway just couldn't breach them Brown it was who gave it away and then lost out to Pedersen Craig Gordon proving to be a barrier first time around and then Gary Naismith it was who cut across to block. Risa. Five minutes to go. Craig Gordon winning his 35th cap. Making a vital contribution there, but Norway have a free kick. They sense they could win this still. And that would give them such a lift after drawing their opening game at home to Iceland.
Musa delivers. Everson was lurking far post. Naismith turned it away. Gary Naismith, who made that vital block from Bratton just after Gordon's save. Well aware of Everson's presence. Norway don't look like a team in a hurry. Although Arge Harida will fancy nicking all three points. Reese's corner is desperate. What a waste. Scotland happy to see that one roll miserably into the side netting. Carew's chasing this. Oh, David Weir's mistake. It's John Carew! And Gary Caldwell made a desperate challenge at the last moment. Just wonder whether it came off him. Carew certainly thinks so. But he could have won the game here. The bounce of the ball bamboozled Weir. Caldwell dashed across in front. And it did make contact with Gary Caldwell to lift it over the bar. Terrific saving challenge from Caldwell, that. And Stephen Fletcher's got this across. Iwalumo. Maloney lifts it over. And a big charge for Scotland goes begging. Carew foiled at one end, and then 60 seconds later, Stephen Fletcher pulled it back. Iwalumo teed up Maloney. Over and out. The frustration increases. For Scotland in particular. Nearly, but not quite. And nearly's not good enough when you're trying to go to the World Cup. Into the last minute of the 90, there's only going to be two minutes of stoppage time we're here. And Gary Caldwell's been penalised. And this will be a worry for the Scots. Can Norway snatch it? John Arnarisa floated in. It's going to drop harmlessly for Craig Gordon. Stephen Fletcher did well. He's released Maloney. Maloney looking for Iwalumo and Hangalang wrong footed. Straight up in the air. Robson wouldn't come for him. Brown. Maloney. Norway defending desperately. His brought from the across. Oh, no one could get a touch. Stephen Fletcher and Iwalumo both flung themselves at it. And we're into two minutes of stoppage time. And the ref's blown up. Because Knudsen is hurt. Agonisingly close. Oh, The thin lines of football. If only Fletcher or Iwalumo could have got a touch on that. Scotland will be looking at three points instead of staring at one. Neither striker able to connect. Much to George Burley's immense frustration and disappointment. Come out by Robson, still time. Not long to go though. Hangeland goes up with Iwalumo. It's all over. And Chris Iwalumo rues a dreadful miss shortly after coming on that would have given George Burley three points against Arge Herida's Norway. Iwalumo making his debut for Scotland and a chance to be a hero, but failed to stick it away. Stephen Fletcher also came on with Iwalumo and both of them just failed to connect to Kirk Broadfoot's cross. But ultimately it's a result that suits Norway much more than the Scots. They'll be disappointed they haven't made home advantage pay here. 
they weren't at their best by any stretch in the first half. It improved in the second half and certainly going with two up made a difference. But they were unable to breach the Norwegian defence and they will have to settle for a draw. And you don't want to be doing that when you play at home in qualifiers. It finishes at Hampden Park, Scotland nil, Norway nil.